Mark. <laughs> hey, What's man. up, brother? How you doing? Oh, man, I'm doing great. It is just always a pleasure to have you. It's been it's been about a year, but welcome to On the Road yeah, to Rock. Thanks, we, man. Well, how, how you yeah. been, brother? Good. Um, you know, the place where I did the, um, we did the podcast last time in, in Santa Rosa, my friend he lost his home in that in that big uh santa rosa fire they had out there that's right you were like so, kind of in a studio like a, a little a studio i had a friend's yeah. house or something that oh my gosh that's terrible that was a yeah. bad deal man yeah uh, they kind of turned it into a positive though they um she she had really good insurance his wife uh you know beyond the homeowners like so you know, they got a lot of money and uh, kind of restarting their whole deal. And it's, it's pretty sweet, actually. But yeah, uh, to lose the non-replaceables has got to be, you know, tough. Well, it is. And that, that just, it seems like every year there's a, set, a part of California that gets kind of affected by this. And, oh, huh, it's yeah. just scary. It seems like no matter where you go, you know, I'm in the Midwest. We've got tornadoes. You go down to Florida, you got hurricanes, or there's no escaping natural disasters, as I've learned. Yeah. Take your pick. You know, you want an earthquake or, you know, well, come to California. Mark, I think we talked to you last April, and it wasn't long after that. It's crazy. It's, I kind of forgotten about this, but last May, you guys mm. played one of the only covid shows in the in the country last summer at least yeah. for rock bands you guys played in north dakota i'd forgotten about that and of course right. the sentiment was well look at this super spreader event and uh <laughs> in north dakota yeah. places like north dakota just said hey we're, we're gonna live our lives and i and i think that it's yeah. a, a testament and i think that it's proven out that that was probably the right thing to do what yeah. looking back to that show like do, was there some nerves about that what was kind of the sentiment from from the public when you guys did that last year uh well you know it, it, as far as crowd control and all that that was like up to the mayor and the promoter and you know the powers uh we kept it safe backstage wore masks and you know did that number on stage you know we got to sing and we're not going to go up there looking like surgeons you know <laughs> so uh so, but, um, you know, people kind of jumped on the bandwagon and was trying to blame us because people out in the audience, some weren't wearing masks. Sure. And, you know, that was like way be out of our control. Plus, I don't think that that area, I think it's kind of a conservative area and they really didn't ever close anything. Right. People just did the necessary safety measures and stuff. So, but as far as that, you know, it was out in the open on a street. So, you know, people did come after us a little bit, but it, it was really not, you know, we couldn't be playing and going out there saying, please put your mask on or, you know, it was no. really not our, we didn't set the rules for that. You know what I mean? So, but regardless, um, we cut the uh, country starting to open up now, which is sweet, you know, get out there and play. People can enjoy themselves. Oh yeah. It's great. Just a world of difference and uh, a lot of shows coming up. In fact, you guys are going to be here in my neck of the woods coming up uh, in July with uh, autograph and slaughter. Uh, it's the mid American yeah. music festival. This was scheduled like a long time ago. We're finally going to get this to happen. Mark. Right. So we're going to get you guys here to Missouri uh, coming up here soon. And we're so excited to have you back. I guess the last time yeah. I saw you guys, you were here uh, two years ago in May. So uh, at the casino here, Maristar Casino. So we're glad to have you back. And I know you guys are glad to get back out there on a, and you guys got a bunch of dates coming up this summer. So all good, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. The shows are coming in every day. Just got a call today with two more. July is pretty much just crammed with shows. So yeah, it's just great for everybody, you know, um, you know, for us, of course, you know, do what we love to do and play music for people. And, you know, I'm sure people are excited just to get out and do anything, you know, <laughs> at this point. So, so it's, uh, we played our last show um, and you could tell the crowd was just elated to have fun and get out there. We played with Night Ranger and uh, Vince Neil and 
you know, people are really getting into it and enjoying themselves. So it's nice to see. Is there, I mean, you have probably never in your life taken a year off from playing. <laughs> what yeah. I mean, we saw, and you know, people are going to make their jokes. And at the show you were talking about was I think Dan Iowa and you know, that's where kind of Vince Neil was struggling, but do you think that, that there's a, a certain level of, of kind of rustiness that that's going to happen. I mean, the, a lot of the, you guys have just never taken this much time off. Is it, is it hard getting reacclimated? No, uh, not really for me because I play guitar a lot, like, you know, and uh, you know, I get plenty of exercise. I got a Pilates machine at home. I ride my bike. Um, and I'm always has a, I always have an acoustic guitar that I'm like, trying to come up with things and you know kind of practicing or whatever so it it was not a big deal um as far as vince neil i i think he had a little problem with his voice or something but i wasn't there to see that so i'm not sure what to say about that but uh yeah um no not a problem you know everybody's in pretty good shape you know so yeah no question about it and i want to i want to talk about uh -huh. your singer mitch malloy who i think is really done wonders for the great right image i feel like and i don't and i don't know maybe this is just my perception but in the last three years that he's been in the band it's like when you say great white whereas before you know terry's in the band i think he did a great job for great white to be honest but there was a different i think a different perception when you said great white back in 2014 or 15 Maybe you say like, okay, which which one, are we talking about? Jack Russell? Are we talking about with Mitch Malloy in this band? I feel like Great White, the perception has shifted, and Great White is the Mitch Malloy, Mark Kendall, Aubrey Desbro, you know, Michael Lardy version that, that that he has brought that to this band. And I don't even know if that's just my perception, but just talk about him and what he's done to solidify this lineup. Um, well, you know, he sings just about perfect every night and brings a lot of energy um you know it's funny when you call you call us a version because you know we we did change singers but um you know i've never heard acdc call the a version or, or <laughs> anybody else but but regardless that's fine will be a version. I mean, I'm on every that, record. I'm, you know, <laughs> that was only for but, uh, a lack of better yeah. term. I don't consider you guys a, a version. No, I, that was just no, for a lack of a better no, term. I you know, know what I mean? No, I've, I've heard it before though, but that's fine. Um, yeah. He brings a lot of energy, uh, positive energy, and he really gets into the shows. I mean, he, he gets out there and engages with the crowd. He seems a natural at it. You know, he doesn't have a script. He, he just kind of, you know, he, he's good at talking to the crowd and engaging, bringing them into the show, getting them excited, you know, which is something I could never do. I'm just not the type of person that can go out there and say, how are you feeling tonight? And all that, you know, <laughs> what singers do, that end of it, you know, besides I can't really sing like a, a lead singer, but, uh, you know, that's one thing you know, you need a certain personality to pull that off, you know, and you can tell when it's forced and when it isn't. And he seems to be a natural uh, at that. Oh yeah. No question about it. And, uh, you know, of course it's been unbelievable that it's been uh, since 2017, it's been four years uh, since you guys uh, last released new music. I, I think we've talked about this before. What, yeah. What's, what's so, the last year been like, have you guys uh, been, been working on some stuff and is how important is it to kind of solidify you know, Mitch being in the band with, with, a, with some, some new stuff. It's important. And, you know, we have so many ideas and, and a lot of stuff on tape. It, it's just that this pandemic deal is really uh, putting a damper on it, just like playing live. I mean, you know, it's, it's really uh, tough, but we're really going to try our damnedest. I've been saying this for more than almost two years that we're going to try to get something out this year, but uh, I really believe that we will um, this year for sure. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it, it was just tough. I mean, you know, we had to do everything on Zoom and, you know, so we're working on it. But uh, we got a lot of great ideas, I can tell you that much. Uh, uh, some stuff really good. I can't wait to record it for real. I'm real excited about that. 
Oh, can't, cannot wait for it, Mark. Uh, so, you know, whenever you guys are, are out there, you guys do a lot of different things, a lot of different types of shows. You might play a bill, like for instance, here in Missouri, with Slaughter and Autograph, two good friends from, from all the way back. Or you might do a headlining show here or there. Do, what's it like, you know, kind of going out? Uh, do, you, do you kind of prefer the, the headlining shows or maybe you get, uh, you know, a little more time? Or, I mean, how fun is it also to go out and then you do a, a bill where you got three or four bands and everybody likes and you've got hit after hit? I mean, do, do you kind of prefer one yeah. or the other? Or is it just kind of fun no matter what? Well, I the longer we can play, the better for me, I, I like ah. to play as long as possible. Um, but so the festivals like, you know, the M3 festival or, you know, where there's multiple bands, sometimes you only get an hour and that, that's a little tough, but, you know, so you might only get um, a lot of songs you're familiar with. Maybe, you know, we can put one in that's kind of a new one. What we will, no matter how long the set is, we'll at least get one new one in there. But uh, yeah, I prefer the longer. You know, it's really tough when you have so many records and we, and we can only play, you know, an hour. <laughs> but you know, that's just the way it is. Um, you know, and when we were an opening act years ago, we were only playing like 50 minutes at at you know on some big tours. You know, so. Um, that that's just the way it is. So we know how to, you know, do that, but I prefer the longer. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Mark, when it comes because to the solos go, the solos go. The, the right. Solo. The guitarists, that's not good for guitarists. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to touring, when it comes to, to COVID this last year, I mean, yeah. I'm not a doctor. I've never claimed to be, I, I don't, I know that this is, is a real thing and it, you know, people are affected, no question. But when you, when you take a year away from, from a musician's livelihood, I mean, does that hit you at all? Do you, do you think of it that way? Do you think of like, you know, this whole time, are you thinking like, this is insane, we gotta be out there or, or are you just kind of like, hey, well, we'll follow along whatever we need to do here. What, what's been kind of your thoughts this last year about playing live? Kind of both, kind of, uh, you know, I'll, I'm willing to follow along with whatever, you know, it seemed to be getting a little bit political because you see some states are like open and then others have this new other rule and then, you know what I mean? So um, that's a little confusing because we've had so much information on, on how to be safe that, I, I mean, you know, so it seems like we could have played in some fashion because people were still traveling. You know, that didn't stop. I mean, they weren't selling the middle seats on planes, but I mean, you're still like three feet away from somebody. <laughs> yeah. That's not, you know, I guess they did that just for, you know, make it for an effort kind of a deal. But um, I think it could have happened a little earlier, but, you know, I know it is. You know, if you have something wrong with you and you get get that, if you get the COVID or whatever, um, it, it can be dangerous. I think the people sure. that have, like, say, a lung problem or some kind of underlying um, medical condition, they should really be careful and stay, maybe stay in. And then the healthy ones maybe go to a rock show. <laughs> I, well, thank goodness knock on wood i'm currently one of the healthy ones so i will be going to many rock shows mark uh, right on. can't wait for that um man it's so it's uh, <laughs> okay so i just have to bring this up because it cracks me up and you don't have to go into into any sort of long diatribe but you you can if you if you want but so we all know sebastian bach he's he's a little out there yes so we're rock and roll's coming back we've got shows coming back and Sebastian Bach um, says thanks to Joe Biden for bringing back rock and roll. Now, a president is capable of a lot of things, Mark. I don't know how much they care about rock music, but apparently Joe Biden has brought back rock and roll. So yay for us as a country. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just thought that was, you know, that was just, that I, was a lot. <laughs> I think everybody, you know, um, as far as the different sides of the political spectrum have you know different opinions so 
he's welcome to his and <laughs> you know that's fine with me mark you're too nice of a guy you're a great guy and i feel <laughs> like we i feel like we have a lot of the similar beliefs and a lot i know this because we i follow you on twitter and i yeah. i think that i think you're just uh kind of like what a salt of the earth person that you have your beliefs but you are open to other thoughts and i think that's something that we just all need to strive for and i think that you need to be given credit for that that's a good thing yeah. man thank you well mark cannot wait to to have you here in missouri uh once again before we uh before we cut you loose as i like to end each interview with a final four drum roll four quick questions <laughs> we'll have some fun you give us whatever comes to mind okay what for question one, what is the last concert that you attended as a fan? Can you remember back that far? Um, last concert I attended as a fan would have been got it, it's been a while, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it was Johnny Winter, it was a club called the Coach House in San Juan Capistrano. That's awesome. I believe that was my last, my last one. Um, I don't go to a lot of concerts because, you know, we're playing and we play a lot and I just, not something I do and, uh, unless it's somebody that I must see. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. It was Robin Trower. Oh, wow. It, yeah. It was four, three years ago. That's right. I forgot about the Trower. Got to meet him and everything. It was sweet. So you, wow, that's, that's been, so that's been a while. That was that. Uh, so it's not even COVID that really keeps you from having gone to a show. You're just so busy as a musician that it's hard for you to get to one. <laughs> that, yeah. That's three makes years sense. ago though, I, I went and saw him and he really doesn't do proper meet and greet. He, uh, he goes into a van or something and kind of waves to the crowd leaving. But I knew the sound man because he was out, um, on a tour uh, doing Judas Priest years ago. And then I saw him again and uh, he walked me back to meet Trower. It was pretty cool. So I, I kind of met him one-on-one, -on -one, took a picture and told him how great he was. <laughs> oh, <I love> <laughs> he really he really was, uh, did a good show, man. He's great. Um, He's 76. Right, still it's unbelievable. Touring, <laughs> you know? It's hey, I, cool. I'm all about it. I love it. Um, uh, question two, Mark. Uh, so this is, I feel like I've seen Great White live enough that I should probably have my own opinion about this, but of all the shows you played in all the decades, is there a song, one song that no matter what, that you feel like is the song that, that um, exemplifies Great White in a live setting that no matter what the show, no matter who's in the crowd, that this is the one song? Is it Once Bitten, Twice Shy? Is it Save All Your Love? Is it Old Rose Motel? I mean, what, what song? is the song every night um uh, probably and it's only because of the popularity but um uh, probably rock me uh, oh, rock, usually yeah. gets everybody's attention because it had so much airplay and once mid twice shy but you know rock me because of all the dynamics in the song it, it you can feel the crowd is like because even during the bass line in the beginning the they start to swell with noise, you know what I mean? Because they know what's coming. So that, that one kind of stands out. Mark, what is the first album that you remember buying with your own money or that you stole? Either way. <laughs> for, for, again, okay, now uh, Johnny Winter gets a plug because okay. <laughs> uh, the first album I ever bought on my own, it was actually the eight track tape. Uh, it was Johnny Winter, Still Alive and Well. So I owned a lot of records, but I didn't buy them. My dad used to get me records. Okay. That's the first one I actually purchased with my own money. Okay. I'm going to give you a softball here. No pun intended on this last one, but you're a Dodgers fan. I know you're what a beloved fan you are. <laughs> they, they, since we talked last, they won the world series in the weird COVID year, but it looks like they may be on track to, to do a repeat to the Dodgers win a second straight world series after not winning one since 1989. Um, you know, if the stars line up, I mean, I think they're good enough to win, but you need a little bit of luck, you know, uh, to win a series, uh, you know, like they, I really felt there was a little, 
things really went their way pretty good um, against Atlanta. That was a super tough series. They were down three to one. They don't figure to win three in a row. And they did. So, you know, I think it was just kind of in the stars for them to win. But to win two in a row, it's like really tough. I know San Francisco did it one year as a wild card even. So we'll see what happens. Uh, They're hanging right there. You know, it's like there's three teams, San Diego, San Francisco, and and the Dodgers right together. I mean, they're within a game of each other. So, well, you know, it's so early in the season. Somebody can go into the Valley of Darkness and lose 12 in a row. I mean, you know. (laughs) Yeah. You really don't know what's going to happen. Unfortunately, I know all too well how hard it is to win two in a row because I'm a Chiefs fan, uh, and I was at this year's Super Bowl. I didn't go the year before when the Chiefs beat the Niners, and then yeah. I go last year and we uh, against the Bucs, and it was a disaster. So I know how hard it is, and I, but, yeah, I, but I'm cheering yeah. for you. I'm cheering for you to make it you happen. Things to go your way, you know. Yeah, you do. You know. um, no matter how good your team is, I mean, literally, you know, you can have a couple bad games and. Then you get in your head and, you know, you're not playing your best. And That's right. You know, so it, it just depends on how you're going to play. That's you know, right. on paper, they're a great team. But how are they going to handle the heat? They've shown that they, they can do it, though. So we'll see what happens. That's why they play the games, as they say. Mark, <laughs> thank you so much, my friend. I want all of our listeners here uh, locally to go to midamericamusic.com. And uh, use our promo code, which is ROCK, to get 10% off the Mid-American Music Festival. That's all I can do, Mark. That's all I can do for them. 10% awesome, off. Man. You know what? It's better than nothing, Great. right? Hey, yeah, thank you so much, my off. friend. Thank we'll you. see you here uh, in mid-July, man. Can't wait to see you, Thanks, man. Thanks, Clint. Always, thank you, brother. Clint. Appreciate it, man. Thank you.